this is Spirit Works Cinema, where we watch all the movies. And today is part four of our director series on Bruno Mattai. This is the amazing Emmanuel and the Erotic Knights. This is the uh, second in his little series of Mondo sex films. This one also has the lovely Laura Gimser hosting another series of vignettes that span through made-up scenarios and real documentary footage. Again, the concept is Laura has been traveling the world with her friends, gathering all this interesting sex stuff uh, and perversions to show the viewers at home. Uh, once again, this is only available in a bootleg format. This version does have the English dub um, with some Portuguese subtitles. Uh, I got it from Trash Palace. And uh, I'm not, I don't see these ever being released in any decent format. If they could find the negatives, I'm sure one of the better exploitation companies might take them on. But otherwise, you're not going to see much of this. And this, again, much like the last one, definitely a great drinking movie to watch with your friends. The vignettes are strange. They make little sense. Uh... I'm pretty sure both of these movies were shot at the same time and compiled of different footage. You can tell a lot of uh, Laura appears to be, you know, she's reading scripts, hasn't really even necessarily seen any of this footage. So uh, they just inserted whatever Matai and Diamato had had rounded up into this. This one starts out a little different, more, much more stylistically vignetted, similar to like gonzo porn. Uh, they start out with a seance at a table, and the table's rocking. Of course, we're supposed to believe this is real. And again, given the degraded video quality, and at the time when this came out, if you came around to copy of this, it might have been so saturated and ruined, you would have a hard time making out what was real and what was fake. But, again, they summon some spirit which overtakes them and causes them to go to this crazy sex orgy. The English dubbing adds a lot of really stupid one-liners. Laura calls them the porno knights of the round table. Because there's two girls on a table and there's the guys surrounding them. I don't know. It's silly, but it's it's definitely funny to watch. Next up, we go to the devil worship area of Austria. Uh, they got a bunch of girls that look totally like um, the... Uh, Sorceress in Lucio Fulci's Conquest. A whole bunch of them, totally naked, worshipping the devil, because that's what you do in Austria. Walk around naked, worshipping the devil. Um, of course, the devil in, in this world wants them all to have an orgy, and we get another orgy. Lots of, I mean, again, this is all soft core, so it's more, it's kind of absurd to watch the writhing, but it's meant to be a TNA type of movie. And these go pretty quick, so you know what's going to happen. Near the end of this, the uh, main woman on the altar is sacrificed or stabbed, and this in, in her womb, of course, because she needs to carry the child of the devil himself, who takes hold of the priest, and then there's a whole sex scene, and everybody's watching. Eh, whatever. Entertaining, I, I guess. Uh, the next one is a some kind of, like, carnival? A uh, weird sex carnival. You got uh, soldiers coming up, He's throwing balls like the knock over the pin, but they're at fake asses, and he reveals a real ass. Ah, whatever. Uh, there's a little competition where the guys are having sex with girls' asses through holes, and they're supposed to figure out which one is their wife or girlfriend. Uh, there's a, a ding the bell competition where you smash the thing, but in this case, you gotta put your dick into a hole, and it, the lights go up depending on how big it is. And, of course, this little dude walks up, you know, and knocks it off the thing. I, I, more silly. I, I think this, this is much more humorous than the one before it, at least up to this point. There's not a lot of a... Uh, it, it's just laughable. It's not exactly er erotic in any way. It's just goofy. Um, now, watching this as if, it, as if it were a documentary, I could see this being entertaining, especially if you had were extremely repressed and had no idea that this is just completely absurd, and you're watching this, you know, around 79, yeah, this would be kind of shocking. 
Uh, we cut to a magician act again, much like the first one. He makes the girl's clothes disappear, but this time hecklers in the audience are mocking him. It looks like a, you know, like a typical Vegas show. And he makes her clothes disappear. Then another woman, and then two men. Ha ha ha. Hilarity ensues. Um, I, this one is definitely better on just the heavy TNA side. You get a lot of that. And then we get to the next scene in Germany. So, <laughs> in Germany, they like to reenact scenes from history. In this one, they're reenacting Lady Godiva. But since the Germans enjoy their comedy, the part of the horse is played by a donkey. And you probably know where this might be going. <laughs> Lady rides the donkey through the streets and then stops as the onlooking crowd watches. She then starts caressing the donkey, kissing the donkey, and then blows the donkey. The donkey's a, one of those cute little donkeys. He's kind of adorable. He, he looks, I have to admit, he looks rather confused during the whole situation. I know. Why is there actual bestiality inserted into this TNA movie? Who knows? But this is a great scene to spring on your friends without warning them. There's some more artsy-fartsy nonsense. Uh, there's one where Laura's reading a, a poem, like a sex poem, and you see the metaphorical stuff acted out with weird TNA sex orgy stuff. Eh, it's interesting. Not, not the greatest. And then we go to Japan, where apparently in Japan, anything is possible. You can have penis enlargement surgery. A wife is disappointed with her, the size of her husband's manhood. And strangely, the doctors are Japanese, and, but the husband and wife are white people. Who knows? Anyway, so she wants to get a larger one. And we get to watch a very interesting, gruesome scene where the man is laid out and they whack off his dick and put on a huge prosthetic one. Of course it works perfectly, but Laura's describing it very intensely and how important the surgery is. At any point, something could go wrong. Again, once well, funny. Definitely funny to spring on people who aren't expecting it. And with the type of video quality you're going to get on this, it almost looks real. So you could, you could pass this off, you know, as something. Much like, you know, Charlie Sheen believing Faces of Death was a real snuff film. Not the brightest decision on his part, but hey, whatever. And then, one of the scenes that really bothered me, and there was a lot of problem with this with the Italians and the cannibal films, too. They go to a, a tribe in New Guinea where the, it's a new wedding ceremony with the chieftain, and before the chieftain has sex with his bride, they want her to be experienced, so every member of the tribe goes and has sex with her. Fine. No problem. Kind of see that coming. Whatever. Your typical uh, like native footage sex scene and stuff. But for some reason, to celebrate this, they need to eat some pigs. Now, <laughs> it's just wrong. There's a couple adult pigs are whacking them over the head with uh, clubs. And then they brought these little baby pigs. I mean, they're really cute pigs. And they're just cracking them over the head over and over. And it's not killing them. And they, they're just wincing in pain and, and from damage. And then they finally just cut them open and pull out their guts. I, you know, so one thing I, I really dislike about the Italian cinema of the late 70s, very early 80s, in the mostly cannibal movies, the random real animal cruelty. This, I mean, this wasn't fake. This stuff was real. Obviously, there's, you know, animals have no rights in South America. But, you know, I, I have to admit, this part kind of just really put me off on the, the whole thing. So, if you're watching it, I would recommend fast-forwarding through it unless you like that kind of thing. But, you know, for a, for a, for a, a Mondo sex film, these are supposed to be erotic. They're softcore eroticism What's the point of having real animal brutality in the middle? The only people that's going to work for is really psycho lunatics. So, I, I don't know. I'm, as you can see, I, obviously this one was not as entertaining as Sexy Night Report. Uh, there's a couple other parts where um, Emmanuel is instructing us on how to measure boobs. Uh, it's got some, you know, nice soft... Uh, 
lesbian TNA stuff going on. And it's always nice. Her parts are, once again, great. The wraparounds work perfectly. You get to see a lot of her, and she's being herself. Uh, there's a section where she shows us an, a porno movie where the director and actress are interviewed and how to make a porno. Uh, it's like typical behind-the-scenes footage that's more common nowadays. Kind of interesting. I could see this definitely being interesting from a documentary perspective at the time. Uh, I, I couldn't figure out who the actress was they interviewed, She so she might not be a real porn actress. I don't know. But they interviewed her and her husband, and they talk about how great it is to make porn movies. So this legit legitimizes the documentary aspect of the movie. Uh, there's a couple other scenes, a Snow White scene where some dwarf dance around her. Again, TNA nonsense. Uh, then the movie finishes out with real documentary footage. I, I'm not even sure if D'Amato or Mate shot it. It's very degraded film, more like a 8mm type of shots of a nudist contest, and that rounds out about the last 10 minutes of the movie. You know, overall, uh, this is definitely not as fun as Sexy Night Report. That's got more laughs. Uh, the donkey thing is a great shocker. Oh, and there is one more scene during the porno instructional video. Gimser says, I want to show you something now about how to do something with a porno. Then the audio cuts out. And the movie cuts to a scene. There's a random girl with two men. They hand her a snake, and she shoves the snake up her vag. And then it cuts back to Kimzer, and she continues on with her sentence. This scene is never acknowledged. It's like it was just randomly inserted into the movie. <laughs> so that part's pretty good, too. You want to mess with your friends, you know, or make, maybe make an edit of this and cut out the stupid animal cruelty nonsense. Show them the donkey and the snake scene. The snake scene is especially bizarre because it's, it's just out of nowhere. There's a random scene in the movie. It's about 30 seconds. I, why on earth it's in there? I have no idea. You know, so, again, not as fun as Sexy Night Report. So, for a movie of this type, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to give this one a 5 out of 10. Huge knockdowns for the pig cruelty. Ruins any erotic concept this could have had. Totally turns my stomach. Video quality on this, I mean, it's about a third generation VHS rip is what it looks like. So I'm going to go with a six and a half out of ten. Uh, I would really only recommend this for a Mate completist or if you just want to see more Laura Gimser. I mean, she's but she's made plenty of other better movies and Sexy Night Report is definitely better. And the next movie we're going to do is better. So this is kind of the low point for me, in Matei's career. It's it's not really that great of a film or that enjoyable. So, I hope you enjoyed this review, and be sure to like the video, share it, make any comments, and we'll see you next time with part five of our director series on Bruno Matei.